This is an introduction to approaching qualitative data analysis. I will cover the importance of qualitative of qualitative data, data analysis to qualitative research, including how to think theoretically about qualitative data analysis. And I'll also introduce the key concepts involved in coding. If we start by asking what is qualitative data, uh, there is not one single form of qualitative data. And of course, qualitative data appears in several forms, including field notes, transcripts of interviews, pictures, and do documents amongst other forms. Similarly, there is no single approach to understanding qualitative data. It is not sufficient to say that the common feature of qualitative data is that they deal with meaningful action because as positivists use words as data and claim that their data is m m meaningful, providing inf information about human data. So this isn't a unique claim about qualitative data. What we can say about qualitative data is that it is data produced in the making, whether that be data traces produced in the course of social interaction, or whether that be data generated in the course of research with the, purp with the purpose of data c c collection. We tend to refer to qualitative data as being naturalistic, emerging from the real-world context of human b b behaviour and communi c communication through which this data is then produced. Maxwell and Chamil, in their chapter in Flick's The Sage Handbook of Qualitative Data Analysis, d d discuss the need to theorise qualitative data analysis, arguing that the way in which qualitative data is understood has implications for the ways in which researchers analyse their data. The Delament uh, 2016 highlights the importance of analysis in qualitative research. In chapter 11 of her book, Fieldwork in Educational Settings, Methods, Pitfalls and Perspectives, she provides some examples from qualitative studies in education which stand out because of their contribution to conceptual ideas. Uh, this chapter is particularly useful for illustrating how researchers can approach qualitative d data th th theoretically. In g Getting Smart, f feminist research and pedagogy within the postmodern, Patty Lather, 1991, refers to qualitative data analysis as a black hole, meaning that the details of data analysis are unknown. Similarly, St. Pierre and Jackson observe how qualitative data analysis is often taught in terms of coding, leaving unknown how to theoretically approach the analysis of d data. If we think further about the black hole of qualitative d d d data and analysis, as St. Pierre and Jackson uh, go on to explain, it is easier to teach qualitative data analysis as coding than it is to teaching thinking with theory. So the result, ac according to St. Pierre and uh, Jackson, is that this results in the reduction of qualitative data to brute d d data that is waiting to be coded and categorised by equally b brute words. One of the problems with this approach is that it supports a positivist quasi-statistical and analytic practice. The data exists out there in reality, representing a reality. Practices such as blind coding by m multiple coders with no knowledge of the context of of the research in an effort to achieve 
inter-rater reliability can be seen as examples that support a problematic approach to qualitative data that fits more with a positive approach. Coro Lundberg 2016 makes a similar point about qualitative d d data that it becomes reduced to lists or collection of quotes. However, an interpretivist epistemology underpins qualitative research, and so therefore we need to think theoretically about approaching the, 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 the data we are working with in order to achieve a contextual understanding of social pr pr practices, experiences and interactions. St. Pierre and uh, Jackson go on to refer to the vacuum cleaner approach to qu qualitative d data c c collection. This is where we are inclined to sweep up all the data from our studies. The result is that we gather up a great amount of d data in terms of c c quantity and that all the data we have c c uh, collected has equal status in terms of its worthiness for analysis. The problem with this approach is that it pays little attention to the quality of the data that we c c collect. We take for granted that data we have c collected from interviews or observations, for example, are, are important. But St. Pierre and Jackson argue that instead we need theory to help us de de determine what is data and what is good, good data. Coral Lundberg, 2016, observed that researchers might be overwhelmed by the quantity of data and approach the data as best they can. That is through a brute coding approach that, we've already, that has already been mentioned by St. Pierre and Jackson. Researchers needing to approach a large quantity of data may do so mechanically and consequently they may not ask critical questions about the data. To engage with qualitative data critically means, as Coral Lumber discusses, experiencing uncomfortable, messy d data and engaging with the resistance of data to reveal meaningful insights. Approaching qualitative data mechanically might be expedient given time frames and external pressures to produce reports, as well as make the, the data gen generalizable, something that you shouldn't really do with qualitative research, but something that may be demanded of you by uh, external agencies. So now we've considered the importance of theory to data analysis, we will pay some attention to the process of qualitative d d data analysis. B Bassett identifies uh, data analysis as the most difficult and most crucial aspect of qualitative research. Bassett's statement echoes concerns expressed across the social sciences about the challenges researchers face in approaching qualitative data. Miles, uh, 1979, describes qualitative data as an attractive n nuisance. On the one hand, it is attractive because qualitative data is in-depth, rich and drawn from the real world, and represents the authentic voice of p participants. However, it is also a nuisance with the process of analysis being challenging. Not only is this due to the time needed to work through potentially large volumes of data, but as Miles also argues, the methods of analysis are not well f formulated. Following on from Miles, Anselm Strauss makes a similar point, arguing that we have a very long way to 
go yet in understanding how we do qualitative analysis and how to pr imp improve analysis. Since M Miles was writing in 1979 and Strauss made this observation in 1988, has our understanding of qualitative data analysis improved? Maxwell and Miller, writing some 20 years after Anselm Strauss in 2008, would argue that this claim remains true and that the development of a theory of qualitative m m analysis needs to, con needs to continue. We now turn to c c coding as this illustrates the pr practical application of qualitative data analysis. We can start by asking the question of whether coding is an art or a science, or whether it can be reasonably considered a combination of the t t two. Bassett offers us something to consider by claiming that coding is a dynamic, intuitive and creative process of inductive reasoning, thinking and theorising. And that's uh, from the 2000, that's from 2003, page 143. As B Bassett argues, coding and analysis are not synonymous, though coding is a crucial aspect of analysis. So we need to remember that coding can be a theoretical in that we use it pu as purely a mechanical exercise in ca cat categorizing the data we have. So in this case coding could be limited to pure de description about the data. Before going any further it is worth asking the question what is a code? And Saldano in the coding in his coding manual for qualitative research offers the following de definition of a code. A code is, is most often a word or short phrase that symbolically assigns a summative, salient, essence capturing and or evocative attribute for a portion of language based or visual d data. Meaning that a code represents something and gives an indication of meaning, providing the basis for analysis. C coding, as M Maxwell and Shimil Ch observe, is a categorizing st strategy. Coding involves attaching labels and grouping segments of data into c c categories. The c c categories can then be compared with similarities identified and c connections between segments and categories um, that can then be analysed. The focus is on finding s similarities and as Maxwell and Shimil observed, the contiguity based approach to data, that is finding the differences between the data is often not as strong as the similarity approach. M Maxwell and Shamil discuss types of coding c categories, starting with outlining organizational c c c categories. They describe these as abstract bins for sorting the data for further analysis. This means that organisational codes don't tell us anything about what is happening, but they are purely org organisational. They operate as somewhere for further data to be placed, to be located. Through the use of substantive codes, researchers can approach what is happening and start to gain an understanding of the participants' experiences. As Maxwell and Shamil say, Substantive categories implicitly make some sort of claim about the phenomena being studied. That is, they could be wrong, rather than being conceptual b boxes for holding data. Researchers may use a priori coding for substantive categories. This means codes that the researcher has already identified through existing knowledge ab about participants or a well-developed 
theory. However, categories may not always be identified through a priori coding. Primarily descriptive in that they describe beliefs or concepts held by the participants. Categories may use participants' own words and are generally grounded in the d data. So in other words, they emerge from examining the data, not through previously identified c c c categories. So here we can see that researchers can use a priori coding, so that's codes that they've already identified before they really start analysing the data. They would then look at the data and apply an existing code, or they can use a g g grounded code that emerges from reading the data and identifying um, codes that categorise that data. Finally, theoretical categories are what researchers use to place the data into a theoretical framework derived from existing theory or generated inductively from an examination of the, the data. So a similar approach, they can use a priori coding or g -g grounded c -c -c coding. And to highlight the importance of coding to qualitative research is um, this quote from Anselm Strauss. Any researcher who wishes to become proficient at doing qualitative analysis must learn to code well and easily. The excellence of the research rests in large part on the excellence of the c c coding. And um, as we come to an end, I'm just going to very briefly mention uh, CACDAS, which is an acronym for Computer Assisted Qualitative Data Analysis. So over the, fa the last few de decades, computer packages dedicated to the qualitative analysis have become increasingly popular. And this is a consideration that you... Um, this is this is consideration for your own qualitative data analysis. This is a selection of the most popular computer packages designed to support qualitative data analysis. The decision to use a computer package to assist with your data analysis needs to be an informed one. You need to consider whether it will be worth you investing the time in learning how to use a package as it can take some time setting up your d d data within a database so that it is ready for analysis. As Bassett observes, it takes a considerable amount of time to learn how to set up a database on one, on one of these p packages. Coding manually may be time consuming, but setting up the coding system on a software package can also involve a lot of time. Though it will save time in the long run if you then go on to analyse a l lot of data. So if you have limited time available in the case of a d dissertation d deadline, you may consider it too time consuming and prefer to, to use, a, uh, use more traditional methods of, of qualitative data analysis, analysing by, by hand. Similarly, if you don't have large quantities of d data, then it might be a more efficient use of your time to process the analysis m manually. The real benefits of computer-assisted qualitative analysis software are where the researchers are confronted with an overload of rich and intricate data and where their ability to process information in meaningful ways is seriously t t tested and you'll find that in Garcia Horta and Guerra Ramos uh, page 151 which is in the which is listed um, in the reference slide. What needs to be borne in mind is that these tools offer assistance in qualitative data analysis. They don't do the analysis for the researcher. Uh, Garcia Horta and Gu Guerra Ramos uh, do discuss how they how they used NVivo and um, 
max QDA and found them helpful in avoiding data overload and could be used to assist with managing and organising data in a way that would be uh, onerous if it was done manually. Similarly, they found the packages helpful in facilitating information availability as the c c c categorization and coding system enabled efficient access to relevant d d documents and sources of data. However, they do point to some limitations one of which is the temptation uh, that technology invites us to treat the process of data analysis as a mechanical exercise rather than the dynamic, intuitive and creative process of inductive reasoning, thinking and theorising uh, that is outlined by Bassett, the quote that I've already re referred to. In short, it is your choice whether a software p package is good for you. Tr tr trial periods are available through most p p packages to allow you to practice with a restricted uh, amount of d d data. So this provides you with an opportunity to try out the package and gain an insight into its f f f features. And finally, a couple of slides with the uh, references to the sources that were m mentioned in the course of, of, of this presentation.